All right. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be working on my little bags for my Moogle cosplay from Final Fantasy XIV. So specifically the delivery Moogles. So as you can see, I've already started. I went ahead and cut out all of my pieces. Hello, so I think I should take a moment here to kind of start from the beginning. So the very first thing I actually did was make a paper mock-up of my template that I made for the bag. I am by no means well versed in leather working, so I don't really know what I'm doing. I have dabbled in it before, but this was the first time I really made like a full functional leather bag so i'm taking you on this journey with me i initially had the thought of cutting them out with my cricut so i had it all set up for that but as it turns out the leather that i'm working with is a like six to seven ounce so it's very thick and my cricut couldn't really handle it very well so change of plan i ended up cutting everything out myself by hand with just a, an exacto So what I have so far is essentially all the pieces, but I've also went ahead and applied the little delivery part here. It goes on the front of the pouch. And I've also inserted one of the two magnetized snaps. So this is going to allow me to open and close the bag fairly easily. I was ready to start, but or I was ready to continue, but I was still waiting on my leather dye because I think I'm going to dye the sides to try and make it a little bit more clean. And I was also waiting on like a um, knife uh, shaver to thin out some areas. I'm going to do some tests with this next, I think, before uh, continuing. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I did was to test out my dye. So essentially I want to get the dye just on the sides and I wanted to see if it would bleed into the rest of the leather that was already dyed red and already waxed. So I decided, well, it's better to do a few tests and not ruin the final pieces. So that's what I'm doing. And I figured if I did this first, it would give them time to dry and really see what it looks like, fit, like fully dried up while I'm testing other stuff, which is the new I, what is it called a blade thinner i'm gonna call it a blade thinner not sure that's what it's called but that's what i'm calling it so i'm equipping my blades into my tool so originally i kind of messed up and as you can see i i couldn't get it to cut and i thought i had ordered a like a bunch of bad dull blades but now it turns out i had just loaded two blades at once so <laughs> As I was trying to cut, essentially the leather was getting stuck in between the two blades. And when I noticed, I just removed a pair of blades from the cutter and then it started cutting perfectly fine. So I tested it out, did a few slices on like scrap leather. And once I felt confident enough, I brought out my final pieces and started cutting away process didn't go all that well it's really hard to control or i i haven't quite gotten the handle on it so i kind of ended up cutting too much so i ended up removing the excess with an exacto and switching out to my leather beveler i don't know if that's what it's called but essentially it's to bevel the edges so i'm gonna call it a leather beveler i'm sorry if it's the wrong word <laughs> But yeah, I just switched to that. I ended up mixing the leather thinner and the beveler to kind of get my sides to be a little bit more thin. And the reason I need my sides to be more thin, especially on the, essentially what is the front and back piece, because it's just one big piece that curls around the sides of the bag. And the way it's gonna be finished is that that one big piece on the sides is going to be overlap over the sides of the bag and then sewn together so if you keep the leather really thick at the at the sides it's just gonna look really wonky and it's just not gonna sit very flat and nicely 
Once I had all my sides cut out and beveled down and ready to go, it was time to dye everything before assembling. I think it's better to dye before assembling for the reason that, you know, you don't wanna um, accidentally get dye all over other pieces. So while everything is disassembled, is really the perfect time to go ahead and do that. And then make sure to let them dry thoroughly before starting to glue and sew all the pieces together, which is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be sewing all the pieces together by hand. So the first piece that I'm gonna work on is the flap that closes over the bag. So at the front of the flap, I have this little area that I'm gonna come and glue right under the little sigil that I already took the time to sew on. So when gluing leather over leather, since my leather already has a finish on it, it has a, it's already been waxed, it's better to kind of scrape some of that wax off so that the two pieces can adhere better to each other. So I'm just using an X-Acto and kind of scraping the area that I'm gonna be gluing the small piece to. One of my favorite tools for leather working is called tokono, well, it's Japanese, so I believe it's pronounced tokonore, which is a burnishing gum, but it can also be used as a glue. So that's what I'm gonna use here to kind of glue my two pieces together. So I'm just using a paintbrush, and this way I can be a little bit more precise with my application. So personally, I like to glue the two pieces together before hammering in my holes. This way I can make sure my holes are perfectly aligned, but you have to make sure to really let the glue sit and dry through before hammering in your holes. I'm also gonna be using my burnishing gum to finish the back of my leather for pieces that won't be doubled up. So this one is the little flap at the front of the bag. It's, it's completely useless, it doesn't do anything, but I still want it to look nice and clean and have like a nice finish. So I'm gonna be applying the spirit gum to the back of it and then letting it dry thoroughly. All right, so now that I have both of my pieces attached to the front of the flap, I'm going to be able to install the back piece. So before sewing the two pieces together, I'm gonna go ahead, mark where the flap is gonna be aligned to the back piece and sew that in place before gluing the two pieces together and sewing them together along the edge. And the reason for that is for the same reason as the little snap button is if I install it beforehand, you won't see the sewing marks on the front of the piece, which I don't want because the original artwork doesn't have any kind of markings for that on the front. Now that I have all of my pieces sewn where they need to be sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the two pieces of the flap together and stack some books on top of it. And like I said, let it thoroughly dry before hammering in all my holes along the edges and sewing the two pieces together by hand. And this is just like the first piece, but it kind of shows the thought process overall of making these kind of leather bags. It's just, you have to think like five steps ahead. I did watch a bunch of leather making videos, tutorials before starting because I wanted to be sure like to have at least some kind of base knowledge on how to make a bag. And it's still not perfect, but I think it's coming together really well. Like I'm pretty proud for someone who's never done something like this before. Okay, so where I'm at, um, you probably saw I kind of temporarily glued these together. I did put in my little flippy flappy. I think it looks really cute. As you can see it holds in the back, yeah here and then flips in like this so and there's a magnet in the back so it's really just decorative it doesn't actually hold the bag like shut them yeah it's not perfect um they're kind of uneven both of them are kind of uneven on like 
the sides, but it's okay. You know, it gives a character. It makes it look handmade and I still think it looks nice. The next part that I want to do is I want to um, sew these two parts together. But first, uh, they're kind of uneven. So I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to go ahead and kind of try to even this out, like the edges. And then I'm going to go and hammer my holes all around and sew the two pieces together. And once I'm done sewing them, I can go ahead and dye the edge and finish it with the burnishing like like liquid. So then we're going to move on to this piece with its outer edges. Now my fear is that this, it won't be sturdy enough and it'll want to collapse on itself and like I can already feel that it wants to even if it's really really a really really thick leather so I bought this other product which is like um I don't remember what it's called but it's used to make the bottoms of a product more sturdy so I'm gonna make it exactly the width of this and I'm essentially gonna line it and like my holes through and sew it through both layers so, and with that layer, it should help prevent it going like this and kind of expanding on the sides. Let's start with that. I'll tune it at some point throughout the process, but it gives you a good idea of what we're going for. So we're going to start with the shitty part, which is going outside with my Dremel and sanding the sides so that they match up a bit better which is something I hate doing but I think it'll look nicer so I'm gonna push through So at this point, I'm burnishing off the sides of my flap. So I just want to clarify, I'm not using my Dremel to do this. Well, I am, but I'm not using like a sanding bit. I'm using a burnishing bit. So it just goes into my Dremel and I can use my Dremel instead of going by hand to burnish the sides of the item. I was also noticing that my flap was very straight and very stiff which doesn't quite work since it has to flap over the purse so what i ended up doing is i took out my steamer and applied steam and heat to the back and front and with the heat i tried to kind of reshape it to be more curved at the top so I did that a couple of times not too much because you don't want to get the leather completely soaked so be careful about that but enough so that the heat of the steam was able to help remold the leather and I let it sit and cool down in an area where it was curved like that so it could really help give it its shape <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Yeah. I remember that I said that this was just a temporary hold. It's not. It, it really, when it dries, if you put enough of it, like a good layer, you set them together, you put some weight on it, it will hold. <laughs> All this to say that my flaps held really well. 
like they weren't coming apart at all so that's kind of cool to know now um, they were very stiff because of that so what I ended up doing is I used my trusty steamer to kind of steam them and try to reshape my leather it's the best way to shape leather is to make it moist that's kind of how you also like do like carvings and leather and stuff you would wet it first and then you would like press everything onto it I'm gonna start the next part so from what I can see I am at this part so this is the part that's gonna go like this and then I have my ends and the weight it's gonna be uh, like put together it's gonna be essentially kind of layered one over the other and then sewn together. I think I'm going to go ahead and dye my edges so I get a nice clean edge, finish them with wax. So once that's done, I can probably use my flap and sew it on to the back piece. I'm gonna take my pattern and kind of measure out where my holes are supposed to go. Make my holes, make my holes separately for the other one, make sure they align properly. And we're good to go. Let's do it. All right, so here I am, one side fully done. Um, as you've probably seen before, I kind of just went with uh, just one thread and skipping one hole. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna make actual leather workers cringe. So, you know, don't look at my stuff, just <laughs> go away, it's okay. Just look away <laughs> yeah and it worked like the reinforcement that I put in it really works well it's really gonna help keep the shape of the bag so yeah I'm pretty happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of this one and then I have a second one that I have to work on so I'm just kind of gonna try to speed through that and uh, finish it as fast as possible and then I can go ahead and attach the panel here put the magnet on this side and then start moving towards installing the strap so without further ado let's speed run through the rest of this section
Okay, I don't even know if you can see my face. You can see my face now. So I'm on day God knows how much, how God knows what at this point. But I kind of really want to finish this to move on to the next part because Kupokan is coming up and right after uh, Halloween is coming up and I have still a lot of stuff to do. So I want to I wanna get a move in. And the next time I tune in, I'll probably be tuning in like at the conclusion or at the reveal or whatever. I'm quite fairly advanced. I need to attach, I need to attach the flap on my second bag. Yes, so that's what I'm going to do next. It's my phone. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the straps on both. And if I'm lucky enough, I can finish that tonight. It's the sprint to the finish line. So I think I'm just gonna focus, go, 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 and then hope to have it done by the end of the evening tonight so that I can start on something else tomorrow. So yep, let's do this. So for the underside of my strap, I've decided to fully tint it red with my red tint. The reason for that is I honestly just think it looks a lot cleaner. And since it's such a big piece, I'm using the original applicator that came with the dye since it's just better for large surfaces. I'm still nonetheless going to use my smaller paintbrush to do the small edges. Afterwards, I'm just gonna apply my tokono on the sides with my small paintbrush and use a much larger paintbrush to seal the underside. It's very important if you don't want the dye to essentially die off on your fabric while you're wearing it, so make sure to seal that area too. Moving on to my buckle holders, I'm gonna go ahead and dye the inner little hole where my buckle's gonna go through. And then I'm gonna mark off where I'm going to be punching my holes with what is essentially just a sewing owl. You can buy a product for that specifically, but I find that this works just fine. So once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and punch my holes. I'm punching my holes on the smaller side of the lapel and then I'm going to use that as a reference to kind of mark where the holes are going to go on the other side so that everything is perfectly aligned and can be sewn together nicely. Now before I sew everything, I'm going to go ahead and dye the sides of that piece because it's going to be harder to do once everything is assembled. So I'm gonna install in my buckle and then afterwards I'm gonna go ahead and use my leather thread and sew everything together by hand. I went with a very solid stitch on this one. I didn't skip any holes. I wanted it to make sure that it would hold properly. So this piece is gonna be attached to the side of the bag. So I'm marking where my holes are gonna go. Again, the straight line is just a visual to make sure that my holes are straight gonna punch in my holes and then using that as a reference I'm gonna mark where those holes are gonna align onto my bag I'm using my sewing owl again to do this it's I find it's the best way and then I punched my holes and went ahead and installed the piece on the other side of the bag is where I'm gonna be attaching my strap. So I'm marking again where my holes are gonna go at the lower edge of the strap. I'm gonna go ahead and punch my holes. Make sure to use a hole puncher to make the holes where it's gonna attach. And with that, the bag is pretty much done. So for a reveal, here's the mess. And here is After the Mess. So the whole point of wearing the Delivery Moogle specifically at Kupacon was that I wanted to essentially be able to deliver mail to the different cosplayers dressed up as characters from FF14 at Kupacon. Kupacon is actually a test run. Hopefully I'll be able to give this a shot at FanFest. Fingers crossed I'll be able to get my hands on a few tickets. 
So I went ahead and wrote a bunch of different messages that are personalized depending on the character they are for. And then I'm gonna go at KubeCon and distribute them to people dressed up as these characters. Now, this is in hindsight, because I was already there. There was a lot of Alfinos, some Alizés. There was a lot of Alfinos and Alizés' mom. <laughs> I, I saw a lot of Warrior of Light, so I actually had a few messages like for the Warrior of Light. Well, off the top of my head, that's what I can remember, but there was quite a few and it was really fun to see the people read the messages in front of you. Like there, a lot of them are either funny or very heartwarming. Yeah, it was actually a lot of fun. I have no regrets and I hope I can do this again when I get to FanFest and maybe I'll see you there. And if you see me, at the FanFest Con, dressed up as a Moogle, just come up to me and ask for mail and I shall deliver. Hello! <laughs> Here I am several months later, finally filming an outro for this video because I completely forgot to do that. So, here it is, the final results. I honestly am so happy with the way it looks. Uh, it's currently full of mail for delivery because I got to test it out at KupuCon and I'm really happy with how the whole thing turned out. I had originally made um, two other bags for uh, this costume in Halloween of I don't know, 2018 uh, and I'd argue that it's definitely an upgrade. This was the original one and it's made out of uh, faux vinyl. It's, you know, it's okay, it's serviceable, but like, that is an upgrade. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. I'll be back next year, because it's literally New Year's Eve right now, so I'll be back next year with tons of new videos. The next one is gonna be how I made the little Moogle wings, which I'm really excited to share. And later on, before FanFest, I plan on remaking the little headpiece and the little ears. So I'll probably make a video on that too, just to show you kind of how the whole costume comes together. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.